Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to make your volleys more consistent, more crisp, and a lot more fun to practice. Let's get started. All right, so it's our first official practice in high school and my buddy John and I get thrown to the wolves. He puts us up by the net, doesn't tell us anything about how to hold the racket, where to stand, nothing. He literally, my coach, just starts rifling the ball at us as fast as he possibly can. And uh, I learned a lot just by kind of being thrown into the ocean, so to speak. But I also learned later uh, what it takes to hit a technically good volley. And first, you kind of got to understand what you don't want to do. And the, the thing I see a lot is there's a lot of kind of wrist motion. There's a lot of chopping or, you know, poking at the ball. There's a lot of shenanigans going on with the racket face uh, as you approach contact. And obviously, that's not the best thing to do, right? Because the racket's going to be moving all over the place, and the ball's not going to have a consistent base to hit off of to hit a consistent shot. So what you want to do instead is, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of saying that the wrist should be completely fixed and locked into place, because I do think there's a little bit of wrist motion that comes in later down the road. But if we talk about a consistent volley, what you want is a little bit more of a fixed wrist through contact. And what that does is it gives you a consistent racket face where the ball is going to hit and ultimately uh, make the paper drop. <laughs> no, it's ultimately going to make the, uh, the shot skid, right? That high to low motion. So the high to low motion, instead of using our wrist, what we want to do is you want to move a little bit more from the shoulder. You kind of want to hinge at the shoulder and that keeps the wrist from getting overly involved in the shot and causing all kinds of shenanigans to happen. All right, the next most important thing, and I think it was Rod Laver, don't quote me on that, but I think it was Rod Laver, who's considered by many to be the best tennis player of all time. Personally, I'm uh, partial to Roger just because I grew up watching him play, and I think he's awesome. But he said that you hit the volley with your feet, and that's absolutely true. I don't mean you kick the ball, but I mean you really want to use your feet to get into position where you're always in a balanced, steady place to hit the ball from. Now, if it's a low ball, generally you'll want to get low too. And in some instances, the ball's blasted right at you and you don't really have time to react with your feet. And I made a video for that. I'll link it somewhere on here that you can check that out. But just use your feet to get yourself into a good position and your volleys will begin to improve. So just remember, don't get too wristy with the racket and get your feet into position and uh, you'll be off to a good start. Now let me show you a couple ways of how you can actually practice this and begin to incorporate these elements into your volley so you can start sticking that winner. All right, got a fancy ball machine here and what we're gonna do is practice the forehand volley. And as we're doing this, just keep in mind that you should never try and focus on too many things at once. You know, we're not gonna look at the split step and the balance and the grip pressure and, and, and. You know, just pick one or two things. And for me, I'm gonna focus on getting my feet into position and keeping the wrist a little more fixed initially. So if you wanna do that, uh, that might help you too. So you can see here in this shot, the first thing I'm gonna try and do is get my feet into position and then keep that wrist pretty fixed through contact here. Now, once you're feeling good about that, let's uh, go ahead and put a little backspin on the ball by moving slightly high to low, again, mostly coming from the shoulder here. And if you want a shorter volley, like you're, you know, you're going to try and hit the old short angle, just soften up your hand a little bit and let the racket absorb the ball a little bit more and put a little backspin on it. I'm going to make a whole video on these types of volleys pretty soon. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe. In the meantime, just remember, if you want a more consistent volley, just kind of limit that wristy stuff and use your shoulder more for the old backspin. And most importantly, uh, use those feet. Thanks so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you as I always enjoy making these things for you. Do me a favor, if you like this video, click the like button and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the next video so I can make it for you and help you out. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's lesson. Also, if you like these kind of videos and you think that you might wanna see more like it, head on over to my website. I got a bunch of cool stuff for you there, including Federer's five forehand secrets that he uses to develop effortless power. And also, I automatically send everyone on my list 
new updates, new videos, resources, and funny pictures of animals that you'll probably want to see. So click the link, head over to my website, and I'll see you over there. Thanks again for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.